Hello everybody, it's me again, Foxy D. Maybe not so foxy all the time, based on some of the comments I've received. But that's okay. Comment away. Of course, uh, if you're going to comment and say very mean and negative things, I will not post them. It's as simple as that. If you have some good constructive criticism, I'm very open to taking it. In any case, the bottom line and the purpose of this video uh, is to kind of educate people, open people's eyes about what workplace mobbing is, and especially to be a resource for people who are going through mobbing. It's very unpleasant. I can't stress that enough. Um, and it happens a lot from what I've seen and from various posts on various sites. happens a lot to people that are HSP, highly sensitive people. You could check it out see what that means. Uh, and people with certain personalities, okay? Today in our politically correct environment, like in the past it used to happen to people who were visibly different, like say somebody who's really overweight or somebody who's of a different nationality, color, creed, religion. But today with political correctness, it doesn't tend to happen as much to people who are, like say, visibly different, handicapped, etc. People tend to be a lot more careful. So it'll happen to, I guess, mainstreamers, all right? I'm like, what's different about me other than maybe my character and the fact that I, I like to speak up and out about certain things? Now, if that becomes, say I'm working for a company where they tell me, like, look, uh, you know, keep your opinions to yourself. Um, you know, don't, if I ask you in a meeting uh, to speak up, I don't really mean it, don't say anything. You know, but people don't tend to do that, unfortunately. There's not that level of transparency. Um, I'm going to call this video three, part two. And that was kind of like, who were the mobbers? Who were the bystanders? And who were the mobbed? So the mobbed, like I said, tend to be people who maybe don't fit the typical standard um, idea or concept of what that typical employee is like. Like I said, I worked for a really big company. In the past, I had my own business. And that's something that I'm working on now, is creating my own business. Because I noticed that after three mobbing events, this just isn't for me, or I'm not for them. Um, pretty simple. Now, I'm not some innocent victim. I'm going to tell you a little something. I told you I, I didn't really get into what happened the first two times in terms of the mobbings. I'll leave that for another time. I'm going to tell you that I was actually a bystander at one time. All right? Um, long and short of it is, after my first two mobbings, I learned what behaviors were expected of me. And so I started a new job within the same organization, all right, but a different location. And so I would, I would remain very superficial with my colleagues. They were very nice people, like most of the people tend to be very okay, right? But we're human and there's certain psychological realities and certain psychological weaknesses that we all have, all right? It just is part of being human. It's how people get manipulated into doing certain things sometimes. So what happened at this particular workplace is that, uh, you know, everybody was friendly to me. I was friendly to them. Uh, they would have events, things that would kill me to have to go to, like, events. Um, like, pizza day. It's not my style. Um, I, in terms of personality, like the Myers-Briggs, I'm something called an uh, INFJ. All right. So even though I seem like an extrovert, I'm actually more of an introvert, or you could call me an ambivert. All right. I can't stand huge social gatherings unless I'm getting something out of them. I'm not talking food. Uh, I'm also very picky when it comes to that. So I don't like small talk. It's just not my thing. But I engaged in the small talk. I went to the events. You know, I laughed at the bad jokes. I played the game, and it killed me. I'd go home kind of miserable. Um, I also like doing art and writing, and I stopped doing all of that stuff. It's like I put myself in this box. Again, uh, needed the money, right? The money wasn't bad. It wasn't great. <clears throat> it was also not a big job. These were like small clerk-level jobs. I think I'd already mentioned that. But So it's not like I was, uh, I was going for some or working uh, at a high level in these organizations. It was all like schlepper work. But well-paid well paid schlepper work, if you will. Relatively well-paid, in any case. But nothing great, but enough to sustain uh, my very uh, modest lifestyle, okay, with my spouse. So uh, 
in any case, so I played the role, I played the game. And then one day we had this fellow employee. She was very sparkly, I'll say. She was a very pretty girl. Um, she was outspoken and very bubbly and quite lovely, in my opinion. Now, what was happening is she was going out for breaks with a male colleague who happened to be married to a friend of another colleague. Anyways, long story short, this rumor starts that she had sex with him, this guy during the break. Now, the breaks are 15 minutes long, uh, first of all. Second of all, like, there's no time to go to a motel or anything. Like, even if it was true, it just it wasn't very believable. And I absolutely didn't believe it. This young lady was married as well. And, and I, I'd been mobbed before, so I knew the anatomy of what was going on. So all of a sudden, one of my colleagues is like, uh, did you hear so-and-so? Uh, we'll call her Jane. Uh, Jane is having an affair with Ted. Uh, and I said, really? Uh, what makes you think so? Well, Ted told his wife. His wife told uh, Kim, who works down the hall. And uh, that bitch did all these terrible things. So I kind of seriously doubted the information. So I would just kind of say, well, you don't really know. I mean, we weren't in the car. So how do you really know that that's true? Oh, no, I'm positive. I'm positive. So all of a sudden, there's this total smear campaign against this young lady. And what they do also is they start to use little things and gather all of this information, kind of like what happened to me. All right. So all of a sudden, it's like, yeah, I remember there was that one day that she was in coming into work all like fancy and prancing around and she like slammed the door in my face and all kinds of stuff. So everybody, the information gathering had begun and they were just totally slandering this young lady. Now, I didn't defend her. You know, the most I did was plant seeds of doubt to sort of clear my conscience, but my conscience wasn't clear. I felt awful for this young girl. Um, I would see her sometimes alone. I wouldn't approach her. I didn't talk to her, didn't provide her any degree of info or comfort. I was a bystander. It felt awful. As bad as the mobbing was for me, being a bystander was that much worse. And it didn't happen once, it happened twice. Now, I had another friend, friend, I'll call them acquaintances, they weren't really friends, um, because I didn't get on a deep level with them, we didn't discuss things of any import, we were colleagues but maybe friendly colleagues. In any case, one of them was a team leader, which like a manager, and uh, she was someone I had gone to for coffee with on a couple of occasions. Again, I did the small talk thing, but she wasn't a bad person or anything. It was just whatever, you know. Uh, so we're in a meeting one day, and it was her first meeting in front of her own boss. Now, a couple of my other colleagues gave her a very hard time during this meeting. And it wasn't just by, you know, she asked if people had questions and they answered accordingly. They were giving her a hard time on some protocol stuff. So I was witness to this. And at no time did I step in and speak up on her behalf. The interesting part is, after the meeting, she was very upset with the two colleagues. She actually spoke to them directly, which I thought was great. But remember, she's in a position of power relative to these people. So mobbing didn't occur thereafter, just bitching and griping among the plebs, as I call them. In any case, the manager came up to me and said she wanted to talk to me, so I went in and I spoke with her. She directly confronted me and said, why didn't you say anything? Why didn't you stop them? Which I found was ultimately courageous on her part. But again, maybe it's not just courage, maybe it's the fact that she's in a position of power relative to me because that's how it works in these places. But I appreciated her question, and I told her the truth. I said, listen, I've been in similar situations myself. And I said, I know one thing is that the moment you stand up for somebody, it all turns on you. So I'm trying to take as neutral an approach as possible to make my job palatable and livable. All right? So... Uh, if you're asking yourself, who are the bystanders, and you're blaming people for being bystanders, well, I'm going to tell you firsthand, bystanders are not necessarily evil, all right? It's like a self-protection mode. It's cowardly. I was a coward, all right? Um, 
in part, in another part, we'll call it survival mode. The bottom line is that um, unless you're going to become a flying monkey, like from Wizard of Oz, like join in on the bullying as a bystander, they often do that. You know, again, people are just trying to survive and, and make things work for themselves. Everybody's got to feed their families. Now, the surprising thing for me in these big organizations is that even like at this low level, funny enough, it seems to happen really often. Again, I've seen it. I've been, um, I've been witness to it because I've been directly affected. I've been mobbed on three occasions, like I said. Um, and I found it really surprising. People compete for these ridiculously little jobs, right? Again, you have the job. It's pretty secure. Just do your job, right? Uh, Chit-chat with people if you want. Uh, talk to a couple of people. You know, like I said, it would be boring if you're not going to talk to people. That's why after I had left that job where I was a bystander, I got comfortable. Uh, and like I said, now that I've disclosed a ton of info, but, I, you know, I joke around. I'm just a very open person. I felt really comfortable at this job. But I didn't realize that it was bringing on hate from quite a few people. Like, I was a subordinate. How dare I give an opinion type thing. And it was a choice. I said, well, you know, here I am. Uh, my financial position got a little bit better. All right. And uh, I didn't want to take being bullied anymore. It's as simple as that. You know, and, uh, and that's it. In any case, um, in these small level jobs, people become very catty and vicious, wanting to go up a notch. Now typically, going up a notch at the level that I was at <clears throat> would mean an increase in pay maybe of about, I don't know, $2,500 to $5,000 a year over a span of time, like say over a five year period. That's very little money when you think about it, all right? Uh, but say all of a sudden you have like, I don't know, a hundred people doing the same type of job that I was doing, like a small, low-level job, and you have maybe one job that's a notch higher. Again, and it translates into a difference of $2,500 to $5,000 a year over a five-year span of time. But your title changes, all right? People would friggin' viciously, viciously compete for these jobs. And in the end, typically what happened with these jobs, you had to pass a series of tests, took forever. I've tried. It's not like I didn't try. Um, you know what? Very, I, I never made it through to the next level. And you could say, well, I didn't deserve it. Maybe I didn't deserve it. That's okay. But I gave it a shot. And also I saw that it wasn't worth it for me to go through all of this hassle for such a small increase in pay. And given my age particularly and what my life plan was, I said, ah, I'm done. I'm not going to be competing for this stuff. But people would viciously compete. And if you wouldn't compete, they'd be like suspicious. Why aren't you competing? I'm not interested. I kind of like what I'm doing because I never had a problem with doing my job. Actually, I did a really good job. I, I would get like letters of commendation sometimes. I kid you not. So I did a pretty good job. And I liked my job. My job was fine. Right? In any case... So mobbing doesn't just happen at high levels of an organization. It often happens, happens at very low rungs as well. Uh, and that's just a sad reality of what it is. In my case, um, and again, I, I can talk about my case because it's me that I'm talking about, uh, my issue and the issue at all of these workplaces where I got mobbed was poor management. Okay. The first time I got mobbed, the manager of the organization was retiring. He just literally would say he didn't give a shit anymore. All right. Uh, the second time that it happened, we had a new manager. All right. And the new manager wasn't really looking to build anything for the team. They were just looking to advance their own career and their own agenda, which is pretty typical also. And I understood and I'll tell you why I understood. Because it's so hard to go up the rungs in these organizations that when you get to that position, and typically you get there with a little help from your friends, I'm sorry, that's how it works, uh, you want to hang on to it for dear life, right? Uh, it's ego stuff. It's ego stuff and it's also financial stuff. You know, for the plebs and for the regular people at the lower rungs, it's really hard to go up. You'd go up a notch at a time. 
Every maybe five to ten years, you'll go up a notch. So sometimes you'd have like a superstar, somebody who just shot straight through to the top. And so they really cared about not, you know, how everyone is doing and let's make the system better and the process is better. They cared about them and their careers. And so this last time, uh, these are the, unfortunately, I had a really good manager when we started who was for the people, right? He he was a little misguided, but he did his best, and he had a lot of integrity. So the moment the management changed, we had another one who was one that shot straight to the top. Um, and I have nothing to say in terms of this particular person, because if I was in that position, maybe I would have done the same thing. Not today. Not af after having gone through my experiences. Um, but... You know, I put myself in her shoes and I think, well, you know what, had I shot to the top like that, bypassing the whole, you know what, every five years you go up a notch of this really small increase in salary, well, maybe I just care about my career too. I don't know. It's hard to say. We're human, right? Uh, nobody's perfect. In any case, so that was her thing. She was trying to play a superstar um, without thinking of the effect that it had and the impact it had on the employees, Right? And her leading by example, she was very passive-aggressive. And her team that she brought with her were very passive-aggressive as well. And the old guard that I used to work with, where they were my buddies and friends, <laughs> my buddies and friends like turned on me like hyenas. It was awful. At one point, I was privy to the fact that they would be uh, potentially allowing people to replace management from the lower rungs, but it depended on how many files they did per day. Now, guess who did the most files per day? Myself and another colleague. So the interest was in squeezing us out, right? Or squeezing me out anyhow. I can't speak for the other colleague because I don't know what happened to them in particular. I didn't see any evidence of any mobbing. Uh, to squeeze me out so that they'd have more opportunity. It's really, it's wicked stuff. Anyhow. That's it for today in a nutshell. I'm going to try to foxify myself for the next time. And uh, if you do have comments, like I said, please try to make them constructive. Don't write a two-pager with a link to your site and some weird conspiracy theory stuff. This isn't about conspiracy theories. It's just human stuff. Um, and uh, like I said, I also invite you to write me directly if you want to at uh, foxyd at gmail.com. That's F-O-X-I-E-E-D-E-E. -E -E at gmail.com and I wish you a lovely, lovely day. Have a good one. Thanks.